Welcome back to Cutting Edge. Today we're going to show you one of my favorite Chinese dishes, Mapo Tofu. It's very popular in Sichuan province, dates back on the 13th century, and funnily enough, it means the old lady with smallpox on her face. And not only popular in Sichuan, it's actually popular all over the globe, and it's one of the few Chinese dishes that most places they haven't westernized it. Stay tuned! For Mapu Tofu, there are two ingredients which are unnegotiable. Sichuan peppercorn and doubanjiang. These are the two things that carry the flavor profile of the dish. First, we're going to dry roast our Sichuan peppercorn. I have a pan here running on medium gas. I'm going to add them there. And now we're just going to slowly roast them until they start releasing their flavor and you can smell them. When they start smelling and you see small whips of smoke here, then they are ready to come off. They are extremely aromatic, actually. Very much so. And they give a very nice flavor. And then they give that nice numbing effect when you eat it. It's a, it's a fun peppercorn. Now we're just going to grind them up. So we have them ready for later. Next step, we have to prepare our tofu. I have here 700 grams of soft tofu. A firm one will disintegrate in the sauce, so be careful when you choose it. Now we carefully cube this up, like this. And then we boil it in salted water for 3-4 minutes at a gentle simmer. And once it's done, you leave it in the water until we need it. For the sauce, we're going to start with peanut oil, which has a high smoke point, about four tablespoons. Like this. Warm that up a bit. And as you can see, I have the burner running on high. I want this to fry. And when that's nice and warm, I'm going to add, here is 700 grams of minced pork. Normally, or traditionally, you would go half the amount of pork to the tofu, but we like it like this, one to one. When the meat is crumbled like that, and the wok is dry like this, so we have left, boiled out the liquids, then we will add our dobanjang, and in this case we will need four tablespoons. Oh, that smells nice. That. And let us mix that in. And now you need a little bit of patience because that needs time to fry to release all the nice oils, flavors, and a vibrant red color. And that's the color you want to see before we move on. That looks beautiful, doesn't it? Okay, now it's time to add our garlic. I have here two big cloves of garlic, minced, and two, two and a half tablespoons of minced ginger. You could do the ginger on a microplaner if you don't like chunks of ginger, but I do like that in, uh, in Mapo Tofu, that you get that little bite of ginger once in a while. It's very nice. Mix that in. Actually, it's already very aromatic. Yeah, it's, it smells fantastic mm. already. And then just give it 20 more seconds to become fragrant with the garlic. And then we're going to add a teaspoon of chili powder. Should probably be two, but I have promised not to make it too spicy. Yeah, please, I want to eat some also. <laughs> And once all of this is mixed in, nice. Then we are going to add half a liter of chicken stock. Homemade. Homemade, of course. Like this. Let it steer. And then we are going to add 
one and a half tablespoon of dark soy sauce, one and a half tablespoon of Shaoxing cooking wine or Chinese cooking wine, and one tablespoon of rice vinegar. And now we're going to let this simmer and boil for five to ten minutes. But look on the surface, that's the red color you want to see, that's so beautiful. And that's from the doubanjang. Let's thicken the sauce a bit. I have here two tablespoons of rice flour mixed with water. Just give it a stir here again. I'm going to add that so we get a little bit thicker sauce. You could use cornstarch for this, but now I'm using rice flour. A small trick there is that rice flour is good for thickening, especially clear liquids, because it becomes totally see-through. I will let that become thick. Time to add our citron peppercorn. Now I have turned down the heat so we don't have that very high heat. Now we want it to cook a little bit lower and we mix that in. And now you will see how the smell will develop. Fantastic. And then we have to add our tofu. I'm using a strainer because we don't want to get any of the water to make our sauce thinner again. And we add this like very carefully. But what you can see here is that by boiling it in salt water, it firms up the tofu, so now it's not nearly as fragile as it was from the beginning. Is the tofu going to absorb any of the sauce or not? A little bit, but now we just want to steer this in. Gently, huh? Gently, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Wow. Wow, this is looking really, really great. And it smells exactly like I remember from the restaurants in Shanghai. And then... We're going to add a splash of sesame oil, like maybe two, one teaspoon, one and a half teaspoon, not more because it has a lot of taste. You don't want to add sesame oil too early because it's not nice when you cook it too long. That has to be added at the end like a seasoning. Mm, nice aroma. Yeah, it smells perfect. And now all I want to do is taste for salt to see if we need any salt. Let me just see. No, nope. absolutely perfect. Now we let that boil for three, four minutes to warm up the tofu again, and then we are ready to serve. Well, we haven't been able to go to China for three years, so then we had to bring China to us. Let's <laughs> give it a taste. Yep. Just with some tofu and some meat. Mm, that brings back memories all the way from Shanghai. That it does. and pushy. <laughs> That's for sure. Mm. If I didn't know who did this, this could have come out of a really good Chinese restaurant in Shanghai or even in Sichuan. Yes, honey, you are great. You know that. <laughs> but it's way too spicy. Even you said that you're not going to make it like, woohoo. No, no, it's perfect. It's perfect. It has that kick in the back of the mouth, uh, and you get that numbness from the uh, citron peppercorn. It's perfect. Quite a kick. I give it a shot. <laughs>